Hey guys, welcome in for tonight's Truth Talks. <laughs> we're gonna have um, we're gonna have some fun tonight. Have an interesting conversation about online dating, and it's so funny um, being single and having people constantly wondering like why you're single, what's wrong with you, are you defunct, what's up, T? Um, I'm like, there should be something wrong with you if you choose to be satisfyingly single. Um, I always tell people I'm not op I'm not closed off to the idea of a relationship, but I'm not I'm also not out there ring chasing. You understand? So, <laughs> that being said, um, the question came up about do I do I believe in online dating? Have I tried it? Have I done it? Do I am I doing it now? Okay, so y'all know I'm just going to be, I'm going to put it out there. I'm just going to be completely 100% transparent. What's up, Donna? Hey, sissy. Um, be 100% transparent. So as you guys come in, share the video out. I'm going to give you my top 10 um, myths and missteps about online dating. And um, at the end, I'll tell you if I'm in the game or I'm out. All right? So let's have some fun with this. Share the video out. As you guys come in, welcome. My name is Marcy Batista. I'm your ultimate power coach. America's number one reality-based success and, re and recovery trainer here to help you get over your stumbling blocks and take 100% ownership over your life, relationships, and business so that you can create the custom-fitted life that you love. And as part of that, obviously, relationships are a huge, massive part of it. And one thing I tell my clients all the time, I don't try to separate, hey, Rebecca, I don't try and separate their personal from their business because it's always gonna, it's always gonna mesh together, right? So when we have issues with dating and online dating, um, dating in general, uh, relationship issues in general, it affects our performance. I always say your per your personal foundation supports your professional position. So if your foundation is is unstable, if it's rocky, then you're going to see the impact in your professional life and the results that you get professionally and out there in the world. So that being said, let's dive into tonight's com topic. The question was... Do I believe in online dating? Have I tried it? And am I currently in the game? So here's my top 10, guys. Number one, most important thing when you are entering into online dating or any kind of dating relationships, don't enter into it with open wounds. Do not, do not do it. Make sure that you are healthy, healed, whole, and happy all on your own. Don't go into it thinking somebody's going to complete you, somebody's going to fix you, somebody's going to be the answer to all your prayers. I don't care if you're out there looking for a damn sugar daddy. You still better be happy with who you are and comfortable and confident because online dating will break you down. Dating in general can break you down if you're not confident in who you are. You end up making a whole lot of mistakes and doing a whole lot of dumb stuff and getting into situations that are difficult at best to get out of sometimes um can be deadly to get out of honestly when we speak of domestic violence yeah terry no open wounds thank you for that thank you for, yes will you do that for me t so number one don't enter into it with open wounds make sure you're happy healthy healed and whole before you go into the online dating realm because the whole process of dating is daunting and it's time consuming and you have to be prepared because you're going to meet a whole bunch, like the, the, the World Wide Web opens you up to people you would never meet at the club, at the local thing, or at the networking mixer. So the whole world is now opened up to you. Be prepared for that. Don't go into it with open wounds because you will get salt in your wounds. Number two, show up as you. Show up as you. Don't send a representative to make your page look all good and all great and you talking about oh I'm into this and this fitness and the the healthy lifestyle and really you out there smashing cheeseburgers be you let them know and let them see who you are out the gate give them a chance to say okay I'm interested or I'm not but they have to be able to see you let them let if people if, if 500,000 people pass you by and I'm gonna tell y'all a true story real quick when I tried online dating, the very first time I signed up for eHarmony and I went through this really massive questionnaire that they have and at the end of it, it came back with the results. Hey James, it came back with the results and it said, 
I'm sorry, we cannot find a match for you. Please try back in six months. Now, had I not been happy, healthy, healed, and whole going in, I would have been devastated by that. I'm like, y'all tout one million matches more than any other company, and y'all can't find one single human being out of 7.2 billion people that I'm potentially compatible with? That's some BS. But I was able to laugh it off and just, I didn't take it too seriously. Um, but so that's number two. Go into. I digress. Um, go into it as you. Let them see who you are. Be genuine. Be authentic. Be transparent to a point. I'm going to come back to that. Um, number three, a picture says a thousand words. Picture says a thousand words. What's your picture going to say about you? What are they going to say about you? Your pictures are going to determine A, who stops by your page, B, if they, if they wait long enough to read your bio and your information, and then C, they're going to, you're, you're beginning, this is your first lesson to teach people how to be in relation with you by the pictures that you choose. And trust me and believe I have seen some pictures out there, hunty. It's no wonder y'all get the results that you get and you got people talking to you 10 shades of crazy. Okay. If you, if you present yourself in an appropriate fashion, people are going to respond and interact and engage with you in an appropriate manner. So you are what you attract. Yes and no, T, it's what you represent. Because a lot of times what, what I've seen personally is people will put stuff out there that ain't even really them. Like, that's not even who you are. Like, you don't dress like that all the time with your ass all out and whatnot. Like, that's not who you are. So don't put that out there because that's going to that's gonna create the, and, and, and it's going to drive who connects with you and who wants to be in, um, in conversation with you. So if that's not who you are, don't put that out there. Because you're going to attract the wrong kind of people. And same thing with the fellas. Bruhs. If you ain't got it like that, you ain't got it like that. Don't pose in front of the neighbor's Bentley. Don't nobody care. Like really, somebody who's in it for you is in it for you. It's not about what you have. Speak on who you are. Go in it. Be authentic. Be genuine. Be somewhat transparent. Um, out, out in these streets, catfishing. We're going to talk about some catfishing too. Ooh we? Yes, we are. Um, women say you're too straightforward. I don't think that, I don't think, I think that's bullshit, James. I'm going to call bullshit. I don't think that they're going into it and not on your part, because I think that you have to be straightforward to get the kind of person and, and, and to dig through it. Like ain't nobody got time to be playing a bunch of monkey games. So let's be straightforward. I'm all for that. And so the women who are telling you that my humble opinion is that they didn't go into it healed. They went into it with open wounds and they're expecting you to compensate and you to fix something within them or within their life. So be straightforward. If you can't take it, all that means is sis, move on. I'm not the one. I'm not the one for you because you need somebody who can swallow that straightforward, straight to the, straight to the business, no chaser type of woman. And that's okay. Be that, be all that. Don't stop being that. Be you. Um, I don't, right. I don't think nobody, I don't think that. No, nobody can be straightforward, too straightforward either, T. Like, I, th I think people have to be able to swallow your level of honesty. And if they can't, then I would rather know that in the interview process than after I've hired them for the job. Like, please, if you can't take my, my brutal honesty, then we're probably not going to be a good fit anyway. So let's not waste either one of our time. What am I on? Uh, number four, choose your sites wisely. Um, do your research because there are some sites out there they just out there to smash. And if that's what you want, cool. But if not, and that's not who you are, that's not how you conduct yourself, that's not how you represent, then don't sign up for a, a smash site. And I could use another word, but I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be some, somewhat PG. So don't do that. Pay attention to the sites that you join. There's hundreds of websites out there, everything from farmersonly.com, Christian Mingles, Singles, whatever, um, Black People Meet, um, the, uh, what you call it? The, the POF plenty of fish. Um, so there's tons and tons of Bumble. There's tons of, of dating sites out there. eHarmony, um, match.com. I, I, when years ago I did match.com, I didn't find a match, but I met some amazing people who I'm still friends with to this day because I'm doing the, I, I paid attention to my own list. And so I showed up, they knew what they were getting straight. No chaser out the gate. This is who I am. And we are still friends. Like I said, I didn't find a husband, 
But at the same time, I haven't necessarily been the person out there looking for a husband. I was looking for companions and friendships, and that's exactly what I found. So pay attention to the sites that you join and, and what the site represents and the kinds of people that you'll find congregating there. Um, Facebook has kind of turned into a dating site. I don't know if y'all noticed. DMs be popping. Instagram DMs be popping. Um, but pay attention to who's coming into your inbox, how they're con conversing with you. Um, number five, meet and greet ASAP. Don't waste time. Don't play around. Get that meet and greet out the way. So uh, what's that look like? You are online, have your profile, um, somebody that you're interested in hits you up and they're like, you know, talk, 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 yak, 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 yak. So you move the conversation from the messenger app or whatever app you're in online, your online messaging to texting. Okay. So we've texted for a day or two or three or four, and now we've moved on to phone calls. And so now we've done the phone call thing for, come on now, when are we going to meet? When are we going to meet? And here's the thing on the meet and greets. Let me drop this dime on you. Do it, a hey, Odinga. Do the meet and greet some places you can get in and out of quickly in case it doesn't work out. Do not, do not schedule your first out the gate initial meet and greet as an all night or all day long function because then if the conversation's not flowing, y'all just not vibing, you're kind of stuck with this person. It becomes really, really awkward. Save everybody that uncomfortable space and just do the meet and greet. I, I think that like coffee shops are a great place to do them. Um, smoothie shops, um, if you're if you're a fitness person, sometimes the gym can be a thing because you can, if the conversation, you put your headphones on and go do you, boo. So that's that's my thing. Make it something, someplace that you can get in and out of quickly and easily, um, that you can safely commit to an hour. And if it goes really, really well, and hopefully it will, if it goes really well, you can extend that time um, naturally. But don't try and force it into an all-day dating thing because also that can send the wrong message if the other person is misinterpreting what that means. Um, so meet and greet a ASAP. And here's the other thing on the, uh, <laughs> dang, shut up. Um, the, here's the other thing on the meet and greets and why I say do it fast because you get to see, this is like the job interview, right? So you're applying for this job, they're applying for this job, and it's y'all's opportunity to come in together and say, this is a good fit that we want to pursue further conversation or not. And if the answer is or not for you, you don't have to be apologetic for it. That's what this is for. That's what the meet and greet is for. That's why you do it at a coffee shop. You do it someplace where you can get in and out of um, easily and without obligation to um, over explain things. And it's a very simple conversation. I really enjoyed our conversation, but I don't think this is a good fit for me, period. Like you don't have to, like you ain't gotta ghost nobody or it's not that serious. Stop it, quit acting like that. Be an adult, okay? But that's what the, that's what the meet and greets are for. Um, number six. Remember, it's not a contest. You're not in a competition. There's 7.2 billion people in the world, and eHarmony has already confirmed for me that at least 7.9 billion, 999,000 of them are not for me. I'm not in a competition. The, the one will rise to the top. Cream always rises to the top. When it's a good fit, if you follow some of these steps and you pay attention, eyes wide open, be honest, be transparent, be authentic, the cream's going to rise to the top and you're not going to have to go through a whole bunch of extra BS to try and prove that you're something that you may or may not really be. Because at the end of the day, if you misrepresent yourself because you think you're in a competition and let's say you operate from that standpoint, so you function and you, you do the whole meet and greet thing and you do the whole dating thing like you're in a competition that you're out to win and let's say you win but that's not who you are. You've just condemned yourself and the other person to just the whole miserable freaking long-term experience. Don't do that. Be who you are. Be genuine. Like James said, just be straightforward. Like, call it. Call it what they call it. 
Um, number seven, and I think this is, well, guys do this too. Number seven is, um, it's not a relationship after a week of conversation. It's not a relationship. It's not a relationship until you have the conversation that says we are in XYZ type of a relationship. It might be exclusive. It might be open. It might be casual. It might be dating. It might be whatever. Um, but until you officially put a title on it, stop titling it. It's not yours to put a title on. Just enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the experience. If you're dating and you're going out on dates, enjoy the dates. Enjoy the places that you're going. Enjoy the people that you meet. Enjoy the bands that you get to hear, the movies you see, the concerts, whatever the hell it is you're doing. Enjoy that. Enjoy the process and stop worrying about if you got a title on it. T said, pump your brakes, right? Until you draw the line in the sand, stop, stop playing. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I, I say like, I know women do that a lot, but I seen, I seen, I seen men out there trying to, um, post up and state claim and piss on trees that don't belong to them. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because if you get the right one or the wrong one, that's going to be a deal breaker. I know for me personally, that's a total deal breaker for me. It's such a turn off. Um, don't do it. Um, number eight, manage your expectations. Manage your expectations. Um, don't, don't go in there and think, oh God, I've been on here for a week and I haven't met anybody and my life sucks and I suck and I'm not worthy of dating and I'm never going to find anybody. Stop being dramatic. Quit acting like that. It's not the case. Manage your expectations. And it also extends to manage your expectations of the people that you're going to meet. Not everybody is going to be a good fit. You got to understand if you are in this dating game, whether it's online or in person or whatever, manage your expectations. You're going to get you're going to get all kinds of people. Like I said at the beginning, online dating will opens up the entire world to you that you did not have at your fingertips before. Now they are like literally at your fingertips. And so manage the expectations of who who you want and be know who you want first of all. Know what you're looking for because sometimes we go in there thinking um and judging and criticizing and really the issue isn't the other person. The issue is right here. It's in my car, it's in my lane and I got to fix me. Like I'm the issue. I'm the common denominator. But if you're not managing those expectations, you're out there thinking that you should just be be pulling in, you know, 5, 10, 15, 25 matches a week. I mean, you might, but are they what you want? But if you don't even know what that looks like, then you're still going to end up disappointed and frustrated in the process. Number nine. Don't give out too much information too quick. And in some instances, just don't give out too much information, period. Because some of y'all out there telling your whole life story about your ex this and your ex that and da da da. That's a turn off. That's a turn off on both sides. Now, I have a lot of male friends. And they that's one thing they cannot stand. Because if you're going to talk about him, all he's hearing in your mind, ladies, is that if it don't work out, you're going to be blah, 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 flapping your gums about him. So just... Y'all need to know that there'll be a time and a place and an appropriate situation and conversation for that um, to come up. Women say standards are too high. Pick different women, James. Pick different women. If the standards are too high, then they're not the one. They didn't. They're not the cream. They didn't rise to the top. Let them go. Float on, fishy. Float on. Um, don't give out too much information too soon. Um, and don't do the whole along with that, like. Don't do the whole opposite sex bashing. That's a turnoff. And it's annoying. I don't want to have a conversation with you telling me why women ain't shit. And likewise, I'm sure you don't want to have a conversation with me where I'm telling you why men ain't shit. Because the fact of the matter is, if that's your whole experience with every other person that you've dealt with, you're the problem. Deal with that. Swallow that pill. But don't, don't, that's not attractive. It's not going to get you what you want. It's not going to get you anywhere. Um, number 10, trust your gut. Don't be thirsty. Trust your gut. Your best instincts are going to be that internal 
thing that says, yeah, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't feel comfortable with that meeting location. I don't feel comfortable with that line of conversation. I don't feel like comfortable with that line of questioning. Or, oh my gosh, this feels really, really nice. I'd like to know more. And leave it at that level, that I'd like to know more. But don't, you know, the whole marriage conversation on the, at the meet and greet, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Make sure you even make sure you even like each other first. Like there'll be time to have the rest of those conversations. Just wait, wait for it. If you're doing all these other things right and appropriately, and you you stand up, then it's gonna it's gonna do its own thing. It'll happen all on its own. And there's one. Okay, so this is a principle that my mentor taught me, and it's we we use it in the context of business. But I want you to think about this same principle that Doc taught me as it relates to relationships, okay? And I think relationships and business are very, very similar and you can kind of piece things together. Okay, so this is the principle. The principle says that, I call it the principle of, 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 of averages. I don't know what the real term is for it. I don't really care because that's what I call it, the principle of averages. So if we take 10 of anything, three things, you're gonna crush them. They're gonna be great, they're gonna be fabulous, it's gonna rock. Four things are probably going to be average, and three things are going to suck buttermilk. Okay? So if you take that into the online dating realm, and you look at that principle of averages, and you say, if I meet 10 people online, I can expect that I'm generally going to probably like three of them. Four of them are probably going to be, yeah, so-so. I can tolerate you on a, in small doses, but do I want to kick it with you long term? Probably not. Are you a fit? Probably not. And then there's going to be those three that hit you up and say something so completely ignorant and out of pocket that you just like disconnect, block, no more, I uh -uh, don't ever want to talk to you again. Principles of average. That's, it's that simple. Um, I do say suck buttermilk. See, that's, <laughs> that's my, that's my thing. That's a Marcyism. You suck buttermilk. Um, anyway, principles of averages. Apply that to the online dating so that you that will help you um, honor your gut and not fight back from it, and it will help you to manage your expectations. If you know going in that out of every ten, I'm probably gonna like three, be okay with four, and hate three. That's it's cool. Like that's how it's supposed to be. And then at some point somewhere along the way, maybe just maybe that one is gonna rise to the top, and you're gonna be like, yeah. I'm straight. Hang up my jersey. Let's go. All right. And then the final question was, am I currently dating um, or involved in any online dating apps? No, I'm not. Um, I probably still have some old profiles out there, but I don't have any apps on my phone. I don't check any apps. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm focused on other things. Um, but I do think and I do know that online dating is always there when I'm ready to go back. So I don't worry about it. I don't stress over it. I don't trip on it. Um, it's always going to be there. So that's my word for tonight, you guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to try and see if I can get through. I know T's been commenting. Don't have to. Terry, I just love how you reworded my stuff. Don't have diarrhea of the mouth. You're so crazy. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, James, from the door, I tell them I'm looking for a wife. Scare them to death. I really get them when I say I need your health records. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but you know what? If that's your criteria, James, I say don't change a thing. I say don't change a thing. Now, I will tell you, if you came up to me talking about marriage at a meet and greet, I'm going to be like, yeah, he's in too much of a hurry for me. It's not going to be a good fit. So you're probably not going to, you're not going to be in the top three, but you might get number four and be the people that I'm okay with. And we could probably be long time, long term friends. But that, that conversation for me would never, would never, not at a meet and greet. So no, once we've had other conversations and, and that type of thing, there's a certain time to bring that up. And I think it's okay and it's important to bring that on early on. But my personal opinion for me, that would signify to me that this is going to move faster than I'm going to be comfortable with because I'm not ring chasing. Now, if I'm somebody who truly wants to and is, and is in the online dating thing for marriage, I'd be down for that totally because then that tells me up front, like, yeah, okay, so he's on the same page as me. 
And so that's why I say don't change a thing, but that's a great way to weed out the ones that aren't going to work for you. Because if they're not in it for the same thing you're in it for, there's no sense in going any further. There's no sense in continuing ancillary conversations or whatever. If you tr truly are in there looking for a wife, then, then that, that question will weed them out. And that's not a bad thing. And it doesn't mean y'all can't be friends. It just means that you know that they're probably not going to be your cream of the crop woman. Um, okay, I think that's it, guys. All right, that's my message for tonight. I love you all. I appreciate you. Thanks for partying with me. Hey, thing-a-ding. Um, thanks for hanging out with me, being part of the Ultimate Power Team, and living life on Mars with me, guys. I'm out. Talk to y'all later.